Hey, hello and welcome. It is the last episode of TFOB of the year. TFOB is, yeah, we'll, we'll say bye bye for about a week and then we'll be back. <laughs> I'm Chris, there's <laughs> Jeremiah, there's Adrian and Imar. Good um, evening. How are good you doing? evening. How are good morning. You? Good morning. Hi. Good evening. Yes, and good morning and, <laughs> and merry partway between Christmas merry and New, New year, year, whichever that is. Happy, happy whatever. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so the yeah. year is coming to an end. Uh, we're recording this on the 31st. So, um, yeah. Nothing like leaving it to the last minute. Right? Uh, well, I, I, nobody's going out to a big party tonight, are they? So. Yeah. <laughs> you, will, you will find out the reason why uh, we're recording so late um, uh, during this episode. So it's all my fault. I, all on me, all on me. Oh, no, it's not a fault. No, I think, Chris, actually, I'd like to say thank you for, given the yeah. week you're having, thank you for making the time to come and record with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, that week will, will play a role in this episode. So, um, yeah, episode 161. Um, what a weird year, right? Mm. What a interesting year. Well, let's drink to uh, 2021 and... Uh, better days. Better well, days, yeah. Just imagine being Rip Van Winkle. <laughs> And waking up to this. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yes. So, um, we have picked a few things from 2020 that we want to talk about. And, um, like, w what what was the thing for us or the event or the um, whatever that I think was... Well, okay, what, what are the criteria, first of all? Because those weren't clear when you, Adrian, gave us that <laughs> gave us that list. So what what I was what, allowing you I was allowing you to be creative, Chris. Yeah. That's what it was. No, that that's what they say when they don't specify what's actually needed. So <laughs> well, I let me try okay, so it's it's simple, right? It's it's fairly simple. Please. I just wanted everybody to bring one thing that they wanted to recall of twenty twenty. Could be anything to do with yeah, with to, with photography in general. And uh you know, uh, and or, or not photography even and just say, look, this is this is something I saw in twenty twenty. And then we get on to the really fun bit, which is our silly predictions for the future um which which as ever i think we say this every year we will we will be in no way held to account for any of this very happy to be called out to be completely <laughs> wrong and it is all very frivolous and fun and not to be taken seriously at all <laughs> As all our episodes are anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's not strictly true. Sometimes we do science. That's true. That's true. It's socially important stuff, don't we? So. We do, we do science-y well, stuff every now and then. I, I am looking forward to our What's Wrong With Photography podcast episodes. <laughs> Do we do we still do we still have that have that plan? I think, yeah, it's, it's, that seems yeah. next. I think, I think it's, it's next, the next yeah. show after this yeah. one, isn't it? Not that I want to wish this show away, but the you next know, one is called something like "What's Wrong with Photography Podcasts." <laughs> What's wrong with photography is interesting because um, not not to dive too, too deep into this, but I asked that question or a similar question uh, ah, maybe seven, eight months ago, as, as you know, it's probably pre COVID. So I asked them early this year, what what is it that that you hate about photography? And I have a lot of people who do photography who follow me. So I got an overwhelming amount of uh, replies from people who were ticked off about all different kinds of things. And mm. so um, yeah, that interests me. So we'll talk about this in the next episode next year. Mm. Haha. -ha. So <laughs> next year, yeah. So um, we each pick a thing, an item, an event from 2020 and talk about it here. Um, who wants to go first? Uh, an event? But whatever you... <laughs> Do you have an event? Well, uh, it wasn't an event, but it was the... Oh, the event is that we have become so completely oriented to experiencing a significant amount of, of our lives in a frame uh, on a screen in or a in, in a round frame like in a bubble <laughs> here bubble uh, and i was wondering if there will be frame fatigue number one oh i've got that already uh, yeah. That's, yeah that's that's not that's <laughs> totally nothing, that. nothing unexpected yeah <laughs> I'm not talking about mm. Zoom fatigue or, in our case, OBS Ninja uh, <laughs> fatigue. I, what I'm, I'm talking about is um, the experience of the world through a viewfinder. 
Um, so there is that. On the other hand, maybe this crossover is to fully embrace the experience of the world through a frame. But I think that one thing that this uh, year has uh, overwhelmed us with is the <laughs> flattening out of imagery and our experiences, whether it's theater, art, business, uh, social life, um, any kind of communications backwards and forwards has flattened out to what we perceive as images and uh, uh, some manner of uh, cinema. And I wonder how much of that is going to remain as a influence uh, in adjusting our aesthetic and experiences going forward. Ooh, mm -hmm. interesting. That is deep. interesting. I've got one of my, one of my frivolous predictions for the future is, is is a bit linked to that, but I won't jump the gun yet. <laughs> so, okay. So, so I think I think you have to. I would think you you probably want to look at this from two different lenses. But pun not intended. Well, you you can you can look at this from a photographer's point of view, and as a photographer, I mean that's the thing you do, right? You put things mm -hmm. in frames. You uh, yeah. you, you try to find the frame and you frame things and you go closer and further away or zoom or whatever to get the frame right um, you and then there, it. sorry you embrace it yes and 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 so so that's that's the way of thinking and I've I mean I, I, I distinctly remember that moment when I started looking at the world in terms of framing and that really changed my approach and then there's the other half or 90% or whatever who, who who don't think that way and who have been forced into this and who might not like it or who might embrace it. Maybe that turns a few people into photographers, but I think there's a whole bunch of people out there who aren't happy about this at all, of mm. course, yeah. Do you think, <clears throat> Chris, that um, those of us who have embraced the frame as a way of kind of moving through life and experiencing the world, um, has turned us into better photographers or um, is the world catching up with our way of perceiving the world? Uh, are we turning more people into photographers? No, I don't think so. Whether they know it or not. I don't think so. And here's the reason. Um, I have... I have uh, done a lot of video stuff like conference like this now with photographers and it turns out that most of them aren't... Um, aren't aware that or they don't link this thing to what they do as mm -hmm. photographers. So I've seen a lot of bad lighting, a lot of bad framing, a lot of like, like framing, framing like, like this, you know, <laughs> this kind of a frame. Yeah, yeah. I've seen so much of that from professionals, from people who are in the field of photography, who couldn't light themselves, who whatever. And when I when I when I pointed them to that, there was like, oh, yeah, no, that's different. So I don't think it is, people... There is a weird thing. Yeah, it is a weird thing. From my corporate work, um, most people uh, don't even bother to, to wipe the smudges off the, the lens of their <laughs> yes. webcam that's built into their laptop screen. Yes. You know, it's, uh, and you, the number of things, times you end up sort of looking you know, at people's washing hanging in the background <laughs> and stuff like that is, is quite... Oh. Quite incredible. Uh, um, although I have noticed that there seems to be, and this may be just the project I'm working on at the moment, there seems to be a, a, a level above when when your when your role is above a certain level, you have achieved a certain level of management or seniority or or importance in the delivery of the project. That people will have tend to have maybe a, an actual study, and they'll have thought about what's on the wall behind them. Hmm. Um, you still look up their nose quite much of the time, <laughs> I, <laughs> but. I it's also better quality. <laughs> yeah, I've I've also seen in a corporate context. I've also seen um, seen the opposite, where people who are higher up in the ranks tend to, for example, and I'm talking about Germans here specifically, who tend to not really think that it's important to speak uh, decent English. So I've I found that especially in, in upper management, English is horrible. <laughs> Most German upper managers don't even care. <laughs> Well, to be honest, I don't think I would be able to put my hand on any decent sp German speakers in, in the upper echelons of British management <laughs> that I would <laughs> <laughs> uh, So the frame is changing things and people, yeah, I guess, I guess a few might be photog become photographers or might 
think more in the, those terms. But um, that's interesting. That's I, interesting because Jeremiah has also put a, a link in in into the show notes here, which is something that actually I I looked at that and I thought that's really interesting and that can help you like you know a thing that might help you break out but also a thing that when you wake up in the morning you're looking at the world th- through a frame <laughs> so <laughs> is tell that, us about it Jeremiah is that your pick well, Jeremiah that you want to want to bring up here it, yeah, well uh yes I believe you're looking at my pick so, no not my pick no, no, my no, no. my p- prediction my prediction <laughs> whoa 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 I'm sorry Someone's calling you. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I should have shut. No this worries. Off. Um, so let's let's yeah let's see. Adrian, what's your pick? So so from mine is mine is more philosophical, I suppose, uh-huh. in a way. Um, uh, I started out 2020 with lots of cameras and very little mojo, and I ended 2020 with far fewer cameras and a lot more mojo. Uh-huh. So I'm I'm advocating for switching things up a bit i guess in my case that meant considerable simplification you know mm. we we are we are forced upon us this year we have very samey lives day in day out and speaking as somebody who's you know the government in this country has invented a whole new tier this week for us to go into in, in protections uh and mm. so we are you know yeah so so for me this year is i feel like ending the year i'm taking lots and lots of photos i'm doing lots and lots of printing and for me that was a question of getting rid of the burden of having too many cameras and too many choices and simplifying it down to to just one thing and almost one thing and Um, you know and just getting on with it you know no no more things getting in the way no more choices no more burdens that kind of thing so that's that's my thing for 2020 and i actually you know ended up taking and making way more images than uh, i thought i would do and and so that's a good thing for me i think um and maybe i don't know i'm guessing there'll be a lot of people out there listening to this or watching this podcast who will have maybe similar stories where they've they've switched things up this year maybe by necessity maybe just because they uh they they wanted to and uh has been a a benefit to them and helped get through so i'm I'm trying to see a a positive in all of this nonsense that we have to go through (laughs) Speaking mm-hmm. of nonsense, what's happening with Jeremiah? I think we lost. What him. is happening with it? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can. But yeah. your camera is—you have your snap camera on right now. That's what we see. Yeah. Your snap camera logo. No, yeah, yeah, I know. I just <laughs> uh, I <laughs> pause for editing. Um, no. Yeah, I got. This is so bizarre. <clears throat> the phone call came in and. And everything got killed. And it changed the settings. <laughs> that is Here. that is forever going to be part of this episode. So oh, um, we're God. fine. Oh, yeah. And well, now you're back to are, now you're back to the silhouette exposure. mode. Doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah that's good. Right. Okay. Oh, yeah, that does okay. call back though to the story uh, we just. Yes, heard. I agree with everything you said. <laughs> it also calls back to the story we just heard about people, you know, uh, uh, at a certain level, not caring about how they come across, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> As you know, I'm senior management in my own company. Well, you, <laughs> yeah, you, too, you, cer- yeah. you certainly have a, a whole bunch more IMDb entries than we do. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, let me see. Um, Imar, what's... I, oh, sorry, go ahead, Jeremy. I, I just wanted to, to throw out the fact that, or ask the question, has this year, this COVID plague, global pandemic and Keep it light. Upheaval. <laughs> no, has this made positive um, or created a positive global lifestyle workflow in one's uh, practice of photography? I, I say it has. Um, it, it, That's interesting. What do you what mm. do you mean by a global mm. lifestyle workflow in the practice of photography? In, in other words, it's not just about um, photography it's not just about how good am i about using one particular app or camera but how how do i deal creatively in looking at life um and and channeling that through creative output as a way of not feeling overwhelmed or depressed or nostalgic 
Well, I guess in the sense that crea- uh, constraint often you know pushes us to be more creative. Everybody's exactly. had far more constraints than they're used to, aren't they? So yeah. you, know, though, you know, there are there are those that uh, have turned that into a positive. Um, and of course, there's a lot of people suffering too. But there, yeah. I, I mean, I have seen quite a lot of. Uh, of people say oh yeah you know, being locked down forced me to do x y and z and here's what i'm doing you know about that and, and what have you so I, I and in a tiny tiny way i've experienced a bit of that myself actually it's like well i can't do the things i would normally do to take photographs uh you know it's difficult for me to get days out at the beach because you know mm-hmm. i don't live as close to the beach as mm-hmm. jeremiah does it's it's 40 miles <laughs> away and uh so and i can't um you know, can't do photo walks with friends uh so so yeah in other ways i've been investigating new things so i guess yeah. there could be something like that yeah mm. as as to workflow I, it's, uh, I don't know about the workflow as such but the thought processes and the creativity behind it yeah i could i could agree with that i think Sorry, I, I don't know e- Ema, i mean your your, your pick yeah, for 2020 kind of... is, is an awesome one and maybe completely negates everything i've just said no <laughs> it kind of feeds nicely into it i think everything both of you were saying there because i i i think <laughs> what a year to pick to do a 366 project let me bring up I your link so this is your take final a photo, photo every day right? No, uh, nope. it's yet to go up. That's uh, so yesterday's. So oh, no. today we're at the 31st. So I haven't posted today's picture yet. But um, that was the walk I had yesterday. So you did a 365 <laughs> nice. project. Is that equivalent to my Just... COVID gardening? Because I normally don't garden that much. Um, <laughs> No, I kind of I don't I, I never really force myself to try and do a picture every single day. Um, I think I will be doing it forever after this because i don't know um but it, what it, it did push me because obviously during the course of a year you you'll be visited many places <laughs> where you can take nice photographs uh, that can feed into a project like that and this year um i pretty much didn't really get to go anywhere after march so um and before march i hadn't really been to anywhere anyway yet for the year so um, it kind of made me appreciate um, kind of what's on my doorstep and just um, kind of forced me into doing some street photography and stuff that I'd never kind of choose to do or I'd avoid it. I'd, I prefer to take pictures where there are no people. I like, you know, trees and paths with nobody on them and <laughs> stuff can like I that. Ask you, can I ask you something, Emma? Mm. Um, wh- you know, I, I kind of feel the same way. I do a daily walk and I mm. take a picture at least one every day. I try to, to generally I stay in the same area, more yeah. or less the same walk. But my challenge to myself is to find something new every day yeah. and, and shoot it. Yeah. I uh, whether totally it's get kind you. of looking down or looking yeah. up or looking yeah. uh, askance. But mm. s- and that has been absolutely transcendent because mm. you you so dig deep into your immediate surroundings mm. um and that limitation as adrian had pointed out pointed out has yielded a lot of really uh fun and interesting uh images at least from where i sit yeah i think so too and i think actually i must go back and look through the 366 photos as a set together and just I'm sure it'll be in 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 years to come. It'll definitely be some sort of a monument to like COVID and lockdowns and and just a really strange year. So, um. well, well done for keeping at it. I mean, there's just plenty I, of distractions this year, and you know. Now, it's... some days I was really clutching at straws. <laughs> well, but, <laughs> but, um, but, but, but we all, everyone, yeah. everyone that, that had a 2020, it right? Way. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, I think I said, I mean, it's a, it's a hell of an achievement, Ema, and uh, I, I certainly have never never done that. And, you know, the Ooh, days 2021 I, I, it just starts tomorrow. Yeah. Well, that's true. Start, I, start can, tomorrow. I can try that. Well, yeah. I'll t- I tell you what, so that what I have done, I, and there's a little audio effect here as well. Right. So so here, here are some prints that I've made in the last two months or so. Listen to that. So for the audio effect, here are some prints. Wow, <laughs> uh-huh. that's a nice right. fine stuff. And for the visual effect, here are some prints. Right, oh, there's all right. sorts of all sorts of different stuff. 
know, um, and and uh, I'm not quite sure what to do with those yet. They are going to be part of uh, something or other. At the moment, I am just making sure I try and print stuff. So I may not take a photo every day, but some days I'll go out and I'll have four or five I want to print. So I've got a, a stack of six by four prints here that I've done at home, and I'm just building them up, and I'm going to get them out. I think I can, next next step is to, to just tack them to a wall and just let them live there for a little and, yeah. and see, see what happens and see what the project is. <laughs> yeah, that would be lovely. Yeah. So let me pick mine or let me present mine. And that is a, something that is very close in terms of timing because it just ended yesterday. And of course, I'm talking about the reason that we're recording this episode so late is uh, because I was on the... 2020 Chaos Communication Congress, which is um, an event by, well, the German Chaos Computer Club, which is a, a very, um, yeah, how do we call them? It's, it's an it's a, it's a organization of hackers and nerds, pretty much. And <laughs> they have, every year they have a big congress, and we're talking 15,000 or more visitors. And it's a physical congress, and it's, a, it's four days of um, people that are very much down my alley. So um, this year they had to change that to virtual, of course, and um, that. And we're, we're talking live talks and things that had to be done virtually. We're talking eighteen separate studios all across Germany and other parts of the world. We're talking over twenty live streams in parallel, um, and those things don't just show up on the screen. They need to be announced. They need to be managed. Don't, normally there's crowd management involved, FAQs, that kind of stuff. And there's a role um, on that Congress, and it's all done with volunteers, by the way. And there's a role in this Congress called a Herald, which is an announcer who goes on stage first and introduces the next speaker and the talks that says a few words. And then in the end, manages an FAQ. And that's what I what I signed up for this year. It's like, okay, yeah, well, I've, I've gotten so much out of this over the last years I want to be uh, one of those and I managed to get in but turns out they also did another thing that then I ended up doing instead which was uh, uh, produce a news show so they did a news show six times a day a five to ten minute news Ooh. show on the stream which is which was in between the talk so like an info screen kind of thing so mm. people know what's coming up what's what's interesting in other places what are the things that are not on the stream that you could check out that kind of thing so um a bit of a talking signpost kind of thing so mm -hmm. um okay so far so good so um there was a new team formed of 20 people who had most of them had no prior experience in doing this kind of thing so yeah. always perfect this <laughs> turned into a a, a group <coughs> bonding experience into a teaching experience because everyone <laughs> brought their talents to the table. Um, it t turned into a technical challenge. It turned into um, people learning about being on camera. It turned into a challenge to work under time pressure. Um, so most people in that group did do some kind of recording, some kind of anchoring, news anchoring, um, some <laughs> kind of writing, editorial stuff, researching, interviewing. So this was a really, this was a pressure cooker, but in the best possible way, because everyone learned so much new stuff. We used the best available tools these days. So we had we had something like uh, what we do on our Discord, a communications platform. We had uh, different um, online writing tools. We had um, some guidance from a radio professional. We had some people with more technical experience. Um, I ended up becoming one of the producers because I have the that's what I do right here. So. Um, but then it, it turned into this really interesting kind of thing. And the, out, the outcome, I mean, people didn't have the best cameras, the best microphones, so we made do with what we had because this whole event, I think two months ago, was still supposed to be going uh, as a real event. So it was really short notice. Um, the actual team was put together 10 days before the event. 
and I got on board three days before the event. Oh. So, and you survived. You oh, sound yeah. like you do sound really energized. And like you really <laughs> And yeah. I know you love this. I know you mm. love this. It stuff. Was, we all know that you love this stuff. <laughs> it was four days of intense, intense experiences uh, in all different ways, but it ended up being a success. It ended up working. Um, probably in, or, or very likely not as technically perfect as a professional team would have done, but it had so much charm, so much uh, feeling, so much um, reality to it um, that I, yeah, I'm, I was, I'm really energized. I, I enjoyed every second of it and it was a very good experience. And um, it, it added one element, and that's the that's the producing under time pressure that I rarely have. I mean, I do if I work for clients, but not in this way. Not in a uh, we need to have this ten minute piece done in an hour, and we haven't even started recording it. So, oh my God. It, it was I, uh, intense. Yeah, I I, I appreciate uh, time pressure, especially with people who are learning, because generally speaking, uh, when I've taught classes in directing uh, and do so every once in a while. Um, I find that that the students all want to talk about the technology, you know, the cameras and staging mm -hmm. and all of that and the lighting. And I go time management is the number one thing you have to learn. Because the moment you step onto a set or a job, yep. the clock is on and you have to understand what that means, even before you make tech technical decisions or yeah. else you'll go down a rabbit hole you'll make the right in quotation marks technical decision and, but won't be able to and, carry it out and you know from, from as, as a photographer and as someone who teaches photography i get this a lot that people show up with like the best gear that you can buy but they don't know how exposure works or white balance or stuff like that. So, so a lot of a lot of people, and I'm I'm pointing in my direction as well because I have been there. Um, have that inherent feeling that the getting a better camera will make make you a better photographer, and we all know that is not true. Oh, we're so, all every nobody nobody is immune to that, are they? I don't. No, think of course not. Of course not. I, I could just make this so much better if I had and, that new thing mm -hmm. over there. And what was so refreshing on over those last four days was that there was none of that. It was the opposite. It was we have content to deliver. Let's find the best ways to do that, and let's look Ex at the yeah, technology last. Yeah. So we yes. had to look what what we could. Well, we had to make do with what we had. Uh, there were no quick solutions for like, oh, go out and buy another light or whatever. That's just no. Then, OK, turn your entire set around towards the window. I mean, it's probably half an hour of work, but it should do it should make all of yeah. this better. Oh, no, wait, now it's night. We have to change something again. <laughs> you know, it, it was really, really intense, but it um, it 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 started that whole process from the content and not from the technology. And that was By the way, very refreshing. Out, out of this episode, uh, that is an amazing and, and I think very valuable nugget uh, to really underscore that uh, in making images, whether they still motion or whatever, or audio, look at the technology last the intention of what you have to deliver within the time parameters that you have should be the defining uh aesthetic that you can explore and there are ways of making it particular and specific to that project that people will forgive once they've bought into it yes yeah it's a, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because I, it, it, in some ways, that speaks to any project ever, right? Because you have your variables. Mm. There's usually four. There's the time. There's the cost. Mm. There's the quality and and the scope mm. or, or depth or, or whatever. And and at least one of those has to be variable, because you can't fix them all. Because that never works. Because nobody ever mm. sets realistic you know, uh, ambitions for each of those. Mm. And. Uh, yeah, it happens to, to me, you know, in, in all of my professional endeavors as well. Maybe not quite with the intensity that Chris has just experienced in the last few days, but it's, uh, yeah, the number of times, you know, uh, you know and, and I have it right now, actually, on a client project, uh, which is that they, they fix the time and they fix the, the budget, in this case, the, the amount of people that were available for, you know, for that budget. And then they, they then they say, oh, well, I want to fix the scope. Well, you can't fix the scope. 
like, you, know, you could set an ambition, right? But you can't fix the scope because then you haven't got any variables. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. You know, it's amazing how few people actually understand that. that <laughs> you know, me included, my, one of my most valuable lessons as a film director was given to me by Kara Littleton, who is an amazing uh, and, and brilliant, legendary uh, editor, film editor, um, uh, who was editing uh, Benny and June. And uh, these were the days where you would uh, shoot uh, during the day and uh, the crew would get together and uh, have some wine and some food and watch dailers um, or rushes, as you people may say. But we would screen them. I would give notes to the editor. And the following day when I'm shooting, they would uh, lift scenes and whatnot. Well, the first few days of shooting Benny and June, I was absolutely mortified at myself. I thought I'm not getting the right coverage. And for those of you, the coverage is all the interstitial pieces of, of filmmaking uh, that will go together to create a rhythm in a scene. I was very, very unhappy with it. And I kept kind of going, I'm, I'm just not getting the amount of coverage I need for you, Carol. I'm, uh, I'm sorry. And she, she said to me, oh, this is, you don't have to worry about that. Like, look at look at what's coming out. You really, you should embrace the film that you are making. In mm. other words, you don't have enough time to do endless shows. My second movie, my first movie had plenty of time. I covered it the way I wanted. My second movie, which was Benny and June, I had very, very tight budget and time constraints. So... Well, uh, unless, you're, unless the you're limitations, Kubrick, right? Unless you're Kubrick, then you can shoot for as long as you want. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but that doesn't necessarily mean it'll be better. It just means you'll have more sure. choices mm. to make or screw up. Mm. Anyway, when you embrace what you have and you use what you have, then there's a liberating mm. quality to that. And that's kind of, I think, what we're dancing around is mm. don't be upset at, at yourself for not having a lens that, that you feel is right or the right kind of camera, or the most highly sophisticated, multi, uh, uh, you know, m- multi pixelated, whatever the hell <laughs> y- you need to make what you think is a great shot. Just think about the moment and how to make that work with what you have. It's so liberating and, uh, it's essential, I think, uh, as you move through. All right. Let's move forward with our predictions for next year, 2021 or beyond. That's what you wrote there, Adrian. Um, I'll go first because it's very simple. I want to do more of what I just did for the last four days. I'm totally into it. So that's my personal prediction for myself. There will be other events and um, I will probably add a bit more teaching to it. I'll. I'll, I'll I came out of this with a long list of things that might be uh, m- might need a bit of improving. So um, I'll try to pour something back into it and see where this goes. That yeah. So can we can we look forward to TFOP being like a test bed for all your new skills? You know, and you know. This year, I, then. I wanted to. I mean, a lot of the skills that I acquired throughout 2020, including making TFOP as 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 it is now, um, have come. Uh, very have come in very mm-hmm. handy for this of course mm-hmm. and uh, I want to thank the three of you for for hanging in there for for bearing with me while I try out new <laughs> new parameters for the recording <laughs> software and that kind of stuff um, because I know that I made you wait for a lot of time in uh, various situations uh, where it was like all, okay that's all good let me fix the sound no let me fix that again uh, can you <laughs> dial in again oh no you're gone where where it so yeah um, that was that was you you were on that path together with me and um that really helped now it's like a well-oiled machine isn't it it's absolutely i was gonna say i wouldn't speak i wouldn't presume to speak for him or for jeremiah but i've enjoyed that bit because i enjoy pushing the boundaries a bit and if you think where we are now for tfop production for where we were at the beginning of 2020 we've moved on a lot the fact that we've got you know, every show is now going out on video. We've got live switching capability, good audio quality, good video quality, and we're able building to a Discord that. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. New platform, so yeah, yeah we, yeah, with yeah. it's, uh, you know, TFOP, TFOP Productions is 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 a much bigger <laughs> thing than it was a year ago, and so all of that learning you put in, Chris, has really paid off. So thank you. I'm well, for it. 
And and I'd like us all to take full credit for all the advances that Chris has made in audio <laughs> engineering. You were you were all very patient, and that counts for like everything. Patience so. in a COVID lockdown couldn't be easier. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let me hand it off to Jeremiah this time. Your pick. Uh, well, I have. Or your prediction. Uh, I actually Let's say prediction. Prediction, better than a pick. Uh, I predict the growth of audio social networks. Uh, currently, our social networks are truly designed uh, around visuals. And this mm. is an odd thing for me to predict within a future photography oh, yeah. podcast. <laughs> but I feel that with the explosive growth of social networks as a effective visual medium, that uh, audio only uh, will start to emerge just as podcasting is exploding uh, invited uh, audio um, social networks are going to grow exponentially there is one and i've listed it it's called clubhouse and uh, <laughs> i'm currently sort of beta testing it with uh, so i i find it quite um able in that one could create a a room people you can invite people they come in and you can have a instant uh audio conversation so is that is that an audio zoom kind of thing yeah you need an invitation it's not like you just talk to some stranger um can yes and yes, yes in yes, other words okay. you can you can uh delineate it any way you want you can make a public Uh, you can make it private. Um, it's, uh, I think it's the beginnings of something that is going to be uh, explosive as we move away. And also this will influence the online dating scene, which is so visually uh, oriented, especially uh, youthfully. I, I, I predict that there is going to be a... Um, a growth of kind of dating apps that will uh, encourage audio only first to get people to understand uh, the nuances of a personality without judging visually. Can I just tell you about an, a one that I know about, Jeremiah, and I think you'd absolutely love it if you're into this. It, it's an app called Limor, L-I-M-O-R. Um, it's an Irish app and it's been around for a few years mm -hmm. and a social audio is exactly what they do yeah. you should there's the lovely people in there it's a really really nice community um for christmas i did some work with um some is teenagers students yes it's a phone app as well um you record directly into it um you can upload via their website if you want to um put pre-recorded stuff up there but really it's about um kind of interactions you can reply to people but when you reply you reply by audio you don't reply by you can reply by text um, um they've got some big plans for a kind of a 2.0 version of this um it's really yeah, it's, a, it looks, it's, it's uh, lovely I and very so friendly so place I it looks fascinating mm. uh, club clubhouse is live only i think okay yeah and words, it's irish so, so, like so, so do, are you allowed to not speak irish in there <laughs> oh, you can speak any language you like. There's people from all over the world in there. Okay, it's lovely. <laughs> it's still quite a small community, I think. It appears to be. But um, small in that lovely way where everybody almost seems to still know everybody, which is lovely. So, um, And it is growing, so it's probably a nice time to get into it. So, Jeremiah, mm. you might have spotted a trend here. Mm. Uh, it's my prediction. It's my prediction. All right, Imar, while we're... At you, what is your what? prediction? Oh, yeah, I just think that you're <laughs> going to become totally obsessed with your iPhone 12s, your Pro Raw, <laughs> and your um, LiDAR scanners. And <laughs> iPhone 11, that'll be the proud end of it. iPhone and 11 owner like, here. <laughs> you're not going um, you're not gonna leave me in the dust, then you're going to stick with the 11. I'm with, I'm with you, Imar. iPhone there's 11 a lot for of, the win. Um, there's a lot of... <laughs> interesting looking sure. stuff going on with those new phones but um yeah beyond um, lidar that's it's yeah, just a toy oh i was playing with mine today it's essential it's essential <laughs> i've got a, I, so, so do you know what we did we had a conversation a few weeks back about the presentation of work 
um, you know, during these strange times. And uh, I have a question uh, uh, to extend that, actually, which is how do you present three dimensional work? And uh, you know the the stuff that you can build quite quickly and readily with um, with with uh, the lidar in the phone, um, and I'm just I've got to figure out how to do that. Uh, because... Wait for the Apple glasses, and then you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, but but with existing products, because I, I want I one of my ideas is I want to make a body of work in three D like that. Um, right. And uh, you know, so I, and there are some technical challenges with that. There are there are good creative challenges as well, mm. uh, but there are a couple of technical challenges. One is, in the sense that how would you color grade a three D model? Right and uh, with, with with consumer grade kit right uh, uh, before Jeremiah jumps in with the actual answer, mm. but it costs a million dollars. Oh. And the second thing <laughs> is, although I'd be happy to hear that Jeremiah, maybe it's another show, maybe it's a whole show. And the, the second thing is the distribution of three dimensional work. I'd say life size three D prints, hand hand coloured. <laughs> <laughs> lenticulars <laughs> yeah, do you know what? I hadn't thought of that as an option. That is a good option. Yeah. <laughs> Anaglyphs. Okay. You're crude. Okay. Adrian, your <clears throat> prediction, and then I think we're through. My prediction. My prediction. Well, okay, here we go then. So I have I have some sensible ones and some frivolous ones. So my first sensible one is simply home video studios, right? 2021 there is going to it is going to drive a rise in the construction and usage or productization of home video studios. I've put a lot of effort into mine in 2020 because it's fun, right? And because it's, mm -hmm. a, yeah, because imaging, you know, take, taking my photography hobby a little bit further, you know, and, and setting up something that, that, I, that I'm happy with uh, uh, as, as a home studio is, is something I've enjoyed. And a lot of people I talk to comment on it, which is great, comment on the quality of what's coming mm -hmm. at them rather than, you know, the, the setup itself but i think you know as as we look down the barrel of you know uh, another 12 months of, of largely you know working from our homes uh i think you know there's got to be there's got to be some movement forward to you know to, to productize home video studios and uh that that's something is my sensible prediction i and think got a, it's fabulous you know, by the way mm. So fabulous, I say, fabulous prediction. Yeah, well, it's it's not exactly rocket science that one. So I have got a couple of silly ones as well. well so the, my, the, my, the, my, the productized home studio is what's behind me right now, which is a green screen because it's still set up from the last four days. So um, right. it looks blue to me, but there you go. well, it is <laughs> it, it is blurred. green. It's green reality. Mm. I replaced mm. it with something. So. I made, so so bear with me because my pick of the week speaks to that right when we get to picks of the week my my my, my frivolous predictions though so firstly my frivolous prediction for 2021 all right i predict that olympus will by the end of 21 have become the clear best-selling camera brand globally right absolutely globally nobody else is going to be selling any cameras because olympus mm -hmm. are going to fully adopt the ethos behind computational photography in dedicated cameras and they'll work flawlessly with your connected devices in a way that no cameras do today and i think really you know that olympus are the one genuinely they're the one camera brand that have shown some leaning towards computational photography at this point i think a couple of their you know their higher end uh yeah their higher end um dedicated cameras are, are are doing more in computational photography than others have and even those of us who've had olympus cameras over the last five years or so and have got that that mode where you can see the uh the, the long exposure mode where you can see the exposure building over time in the viewfinder um you know i think olympus are the camera who company who think in the right way for where photography is going. So that's my frivolous production for 2020, so prediction for 2021. Okay. And then I've got, and then I've got a last one. Um, which this is one is the, mad. <laughs> well, do you know what? Okay, so this is a slightly beyond 2021. Yeah. But yeah, you know, um, anybody, right, hands up, anybody whose house is fundamentally used in different ways now from what it was 12 months ago, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay maybe just me but we you know we we've com not completely changed but we have you know materially changed what rooms in our house do through mm. 2020 and yeah because we use the house in a very very different way from how we used to right uh uh, and there's a lot yeah, and and as our, our family are more at home of course than, than they they are usually and need need different things at home 
So I think that my prediction for beyond is that we're going to see a school of design that comes up. Is so what does a, a 2020s house actually need to look like? It doesn't need a guest bedroom, right? It just doesn't. <laughs> Nobody has guests anymore, right? <laughs> so, so studio. So, 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 so studio, why would you, right? yeah, so, so put it, you know, uh, but why would you not build a video studio instead, right? Because everybody talks, you know, I, I've had one today. I, we were playing um, a, a sort of partially online board game with extended family members. Uh, we had a Google Meet call on earlier on, and uh, the, there's the the game itself works through an app you can download to devices. It, the, the game is a blend of Trivial Pursuit and Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, uh, but it works online and. And you can work remotely and it's it's good fun and it allows you to connect with family members without having that thing of everybody talking over each other <laughs> so you know i think but, but uh, you know houses need places to have video calls right whole family video calls houses classrooms are, yeah. classrooms yes absolutely um it, it, do, that and that is something that is is going to be set up in my house probably in the next couple of days um uh because there's a chance that my kids are not going to be able to go back to school next week um and so we're going to need a study not just for one person a study for two people right because you're gonna you know i will be doing my work and i'll have one of my kids sat beside me doing their work right uh and this speaks to the home video thing it's a studio again as well because both of us will be doing video work and mm -hmm. you know and and it's so, so just I, my, my prediction is that we'll have, see a new school of design, right? We won't have dining rooms anymore. We won't have guest bedrooms. We'll have video studios in our house. And one for Chris here, we'll have VR padded rooms, Chris. Just an empty <laughs> room, but with padded walls. You can go into, put your headset on and, and interact in, in in the VR world. So there I you think, go. I think, they'll, I think they'll fix that problem in different ways, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're going to put on one of those sumo suits. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. <sighs> okay, that was our predictions. Let's do a quick lightning round of picks of the week. Um, I'll kick this off um, by present. I'm not sure if I presented it here last week, but let me do. If if that's the case, let me do it again. Oh, let me switch the video over to myself. Here we go. Um, that's my meeting cards that I got from Monica. Um, little online video chat meeting cards like this one. Mm. I'll be right Ooh. back. Or <laughs> great idea. Or <laughs> you're on mute. Or oh, that will get you. You just pick up. Thumbs up. Or where where did Monica get that? I can't hear you. I'll 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 shoot you the link. Uh, they're not they're not essential. Cheap, but, but you can you can essential. have these, you can have these as an app on your phone for free. Um, I like hilarious. this one, which will look funny because it it is it, 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 it's the wrong color for the chroma, chroma key, but it's the Elmo card. It's the enough, let's move on card. Um, <laughs> but the best one is this one. The red card. The red card. So for those, that, for those only listening, Chris is holding up I'm a holding series up of cards. playing cards. Yes. They, they're the size of playing cards. They're even um, smaller. But, but they, they have them. graphic designs and words on them, very useful for correcting people on video calls without without interrupting because because you're without on Zoom and you're yeah. talking over each other, and then it's much easier to just hold something up. Oh, so good. Yes, that is brilliant. <laughs> genius, genius. I love that one. <laughs> anyway, if I if I find the link, I'll put that in the show notes. So, um, Adrian, what's yours? Okay, so so this is something uh, I made my first ever green screen videos this week, um, and uh, this particular link is to a present that my daughter got for Christmas, uh, which uh, is uh, it, it is uh, it's a bit more than a toy. It's actually genuinely useful, but it is actually you know, designed for children to use as a present, and it's a little light stand with a little baby ring light on it, oh. uh, and it has a, a phone holder. And then it also comes with a green screen that you can tape to the wall uh, and uh, you can make green screen videos. Uh, Ready to become a real influencer, <laughs> says the yeah. video at the beginning. <laughs> so this this thing is genius, right? It's a whole kit and it even comes with, in, in the instruction booklet it comes with, there are some full colour photographs uh, which you can use as the background to replace your green screen. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, what you do is you take a photograph of the pictures in this in this booklet. You take a photograph uh, with your phone, 
and then you can use that then you've got a photograph you can use as a background and and we did it i i got my phone out um and we videoed ellie in front of the uh in, in front of the green screen and she chose the background she wanted i took a photo of it and um, i admit i composited it in luma fusion which is a little bit more than a toy <laughs> um but because i know that luma fusion has an adjustable chroma key function i knew i would be fine in that um and then the other one made with my son and he got a little while ago, actually, he got um, a Harry Potter cloak of invisibility, right? <laughs> which I can't so, show because the movie gave never me been says, seen uh, again. says 404. <laughs> oh, sorry. Doesn't yeah, matter. Okay, so, Doesn't so matter. never mind. But the uh, the the Harry well, Potter that's perfect, cloak of invisibility it? it's <laughs> is, is just a green cloak. Uh -huh. And we did a floating head video, right? We just did a, we just did a floating head video shot on the phone and, and, and it was hilarious and good fun and really easy to do. So those are my picks of the week. Yeah, get get yourself some, some even just at the child's toy level, get yourself some green screen stuff. 2020 has really changed a few things. Um, uh -huh. Imar, you'll get the last word. So Jeremiah first. Um, uh, I chose this thing. Uh, it's a jupe travel pod. It, 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 it effectively is a, a very modern um, off-grid living structure. And I thought, well, this is the kind of thing that you can plunk down. If you could figure out a way, which would be easy, to darken it, you could turn this into a camera obscura uh, that you could haul around, uh, plunk down, and live in it and take pictures in your own off-grid living oh, yeah. uh, away yeah. world. Uh, mm. So Unless you um, dominate the frame as the rest of us. You know, why did I pick it? I don't know. It just seemed like the thing to do. <laughs> so we, we yearn to get away. Do you know what? Right. I've, I've been thinking, like, because you know, uh, it's the time of year when you think, oh, well, what would a summer holiday, a summer vacation look like? Yeah. Where shall we fly to this year to, to either explore or relax or, or, or soak up the culture or, or, or all three? And that's going to be so hard in 2021. So I, I, I like the, I like the idea of that. That is something you fold up. Yeah, you, know, you could, you could take it somewhere and, and plonk, plonk it down and live in it for a bit. You know, it, it looks a bit more comfortable than your average tent. I have to say. Yeah. Mm. And and you could turn it into a camera. You could turn it into a camera. That that'd be cool. That that'd you can cool. live in. All right. I'm so tempted, by the way, they're not doing pre-orders yet. But I'm so tempted to buy that new VW electric bus. That would be awesome. <laughs> that would be awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Last word this year on the show by Imar. Last what is your word. pick of the week? My pick of the week is a guy that I mentioned before, Nigel Jansen. He's really good on YouTube. This video is lovely. He, he's just, his enthusiasm in this is just totally infectious. Um, you, if you want to see somebody doing what they love, then watch this. It's just lovely. But um, I've been waiting for snow, so I was hoping to maybe use some of his tips. But um, unfortunately, all we've been having is rain and sleet, so I'm still waiting on snow. But um, lovely tips in this. And he took some gorgeous shots on this trip out one early one morning. Beautiful winter um, stuff. He lives yeah. in a lovely place up north of England somewhere. Um, and they have snow up there. Cumbria or somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, they good. do it at the north of England and Scotland. has got snow at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, no snow here yeah. as as every time around this year. I think I think the the European weather especially over Germany is probably has like a I think a 20 or 10 to 20% chance of of a white Christmas. It's just not happening. Oh. So yeah. Anyway, that brings us to the end of our last episode of the year. Um thanks everyone for being tuned in. Thanks for um yeah, for being with us for this entire year. I hope we brought you a little bit of uh, light every now and then, and hopefully not too much doom and gloom. I know we can do that too. I'm working on that. I'm working on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't even have to work on it. <laughs> it comes natural. natural. <laughs> uh, I'm working so, on improving it, I meant. Not <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll all work on that in one way or the other. We'll be back probably in a week from now, next year, and um, <laughs> you have a happy new year. And uh, Happy new year, everybody. Happy, happy new year. Bye -bye, new year. Take care. Bye-bye.